Asia is a massive area consisting of dozens of diverse nations spread across a very large area. In my opinion, it's the most exciting region in the world with a rich culture and history, a rising and bright future, and a lot to see and do. Today, I want to talk about an aspect of Asia which many Western people often associate with it, sex tourism. When people think of sex tourism, they immediately imagine old creepy men who have sex for money in all kinds of dirty shacks with often unwilling women, sometimes even minors. In short, a very negative image and a connotation that makes a lot of men hesitant and reluctant about giving their desire for sex tourism in Asia a chance. The reality is often quite different. We'll take a look at the various forms of sex tourism in Asia. However, before we get started, I would like to emphasize three things. One, use condoms when you are engaging in sex with anyone in these countries because you avoid getting a disease or giving one to her. If you get a girl pregnant because you were too horny or stupid to put on a condom and you then fuck off and leave the poor thing as a single mother, having to scrape out a miserable existence with no way of escaping from it, you are the scum of the earth and I hope you rot in painful agony. Two. Never go under 18, never ever go for minors, even if she's 17 and looks smoking hot. It's not worth the risk, and you wouldn't be the first horny foreigner to get thrown in jail for something like this. And finally, number 3, if you suspect that your paid for partner is being forced into this by someone else, be it a pimp or some criminal gang, do not engage in any activity. Politely decline and get out of there. I have no desire to lie with the woman who has been commanded to do so. All right, let's start by exploring what sex tourism is. Sex tourism simply means taking a trip to another country and having sex with usually young men or women there. This can be either for a fee or for free. Both are excellent options and I've had positive experiences with either. In Asia, you can find opportunities for sex tourism in pretty much every country, except maybe North Korea, although I'm sure there are ways. But some noticeable highlights are Thailand, Japan, the Philippines, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Having free sex with women in Asia is quite easy. And if you're interested and willing to put in the time, it's definitely an option. You will have to work and put in some effort, but it's not hard. However, sex tourism usually comes down to paying for sex, prostitution. In my opinion, there is nothing wrong with this at all, as long as nobody is being forced into it. Contrary to the negative image many people have of sex tourism in Asia, 90% of this scene is a vibrant, active, and mutually beneficial sector. Both parties in the transaction benefit from it. The man gets sex, and the woman gets money. Both want what the other can give, and if adult people voluntarily choose to engage in such a transaction, it's nobody else's business especially not the governments. As in most other countries, you can find sex tourism in Asia in more or less every city in every country. Everywhere there are women or men who could use some money and have no problem spreading their legs or getting on their knees for it. But of course, this is much more common in big cities like Manila, Bangkok, Shanghai, Phnom Penh and Saigon. So I would recommend heading there. Sex tourism in Asia can manifest itself in many interesting ways, including there are freelance prostitutes who can approach you on the street or who can be found if you go looking for them. Every city has areas which they are known to frequent. That is usually the cheapest option as you can haggle about the price, but you will have to put in some effort into finding them. Also, definitely make sure that you always use a condom here because freelancers aren't the most hygienic option. You can also find these on dating apps and websites. A specialty in Asia are the erotic massage parlors. You go in and buy a massage, and then the girl will massage you and turn you on, after which you can pay for more, a hand job, low job, or full on sex. No way! This is usually a very pleasant and fun experience, especially when oil is used. Another variant of this are the Nuru massages, where the masseuse gets naked and massages you with her body. I can fully recommend this, it's really fun. A potential problem here is that it's not always clear which massage parlors offer happy endings and which do not. With some experience in this sector, you can usually make an educated guess, but it can also happen that you pay for a massage, get all excited, and receive nothing more than a massage and irritate the masseuse with your erection. So be sure to research this option and don't initiate anything. Leave it to the masseuse and see what she does. You'll know and feel when she's up for more, 
If not, leave it be and find another salon. It's also possible to find freelance masseuses online who come to your condo for a private massage. Again, it's important here to make arrangements beforehand to avoid potentially embarrassing or even dangerous situations. In Asia, there are also certain bars where you can find plenty of prostitutes who work there, kind of like strip clubs. These are not ordinary bars, but establishments that are fully focused on this business model. You buy the girl of your choice a drink, and then you can negotiate quickly and quietly what you want. Often you can just fuck them at the back of the bar. They usually have beds, but you will have to pay extra for that, and it's pretty greasy. Oh my God, that's greasy. Sometimes life is greasy, Bubbles. A lot of these girls are also just open to going to your hotel or condo after their shift. And that's what I would recommend. It's cleaner, gives you more freedom, it's usually cheaper, and the girl actually gets to keep all the money she works for. You can also hire escorts through certain websites or apps, such as Smoochie. These are prostitutes of a slightly higher standard who come to your hotel room for a few hours. It's very relaxing, you don't have to do much except order and then pay them. The disadvantage is that these are usually the most expensive option. There's also de facto prostitution. Girls who are in a weird grey zone. In countries like the Philippines, there are plenty of tuition girls, girls in college or university, who occasionally fuck a man for money to pay their tuition fees. They don't consider themselves prostitutes, but of course that's basically what they are, amateur hookers. You can find these on social media, dating sites and apps, but be subtle and let them initiate talking about this topic. Sugar dating is also possible, where you support a girl financially, and she gives you physical support. You're usually not paying the girl per time you fuck, and it's more of a long-term transactional relationship, where you can usually get all kinds of sexual benefits as long as you support her. There are plenty of other options to find sex tourism in Asia, such as karaoke bars, blowjob bars, and so on. It all depends on where you go and what you want. A karaoke bar is similar to a massage parlor, but where you pick a girl and instead of getting a massage, you can bring her into a semi-darkened room, have some food and drinks, and sing and probably fuck. I prefer the massage, but to each his own. A blowjob bar is simply a discreet bar where you can get a blowjob in a comfortable seat, sometimes even for many girls in a row. This is especially prevalent in Japan, and while it looks shady and weird, it's pretty fun and exciting. All right, to end the video, let's tackle the elephant in the room. Is sex tourism in Asia legal? Well, sex tourism and prostitution in Asia are often not legal, but they're more in a gray zone of tolerance, just like in most Western countries. In theory, it is illegal for moronic and often religious reasons but in practice it is ubiquitous and policymakers realize this too. Hell, they are almost always frequent and enthusiastic partakers. Everyone knows what's going on in an erotic massage parlor or a girly bar and the fact that these just stay open says a lot. Sometimes there are crackdowns when some zealous politician makes some noise, but a few weeks or months later the bars and parlors just open up again, quietly resuming their services. I've seen this happen firsthand in Shanghai. For a few weeks, these places just stayed closed or only open during the night to select customers, but after that, it was back to business as usual. Just like in most other countries, I can therefore advise you not to shout your activities from the rooftops, but just suddenly go ahead and have fun. But realize that you are in a tolerance zone, so don't push the boundaries. That's about all I've got for today. If you like this kind of topic and want to see more of it, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you've got questions or remarks, leave a comment below. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next video.